Rolling Shutter Wobble Vision presents. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Okay, it's Cool Dude Clem and I've been tubing again. Doing more experiments with tube amplifiers. Yes, I've gone and built another one. Again, this is a single-ended Class A. And I thought I'd use both sides of an ECC83, otherwise known as a 12XA7, and an EL84. Four, I've forgotten what that's known overseas, but happy to say it works and it is very sensitive. Of course, I will put up a schematic diagram. It works and it sounds really good. The only problem is it's a little bit hummy. Microphone right there on the speaker. You might be able to hear that. And my webcam appears to be behaving, so that's good. I threatened it with buying a new webcam and it seems ever since then it seems to be working just fine so yeah and people watching this who are going to post on the C wiki forum saying all offensive stuff about me go ahead go ahead I say everything you say is all bollocks yeah I said the B word because I'm not offended by that one and I'm not listening to anything you have to say. You think this is going to stop me making videos? By twisting all the facts about me and getting a lot of things wrong? Well, you're wrong. Anyway, now that's off my chest. I have the tape. Good play a song from the Real to Real. One of my own songs, actually. Really got to get on with that video about how I do my music, but anyway. Let's give this a little listen. And there it is. Let's adjust the volume control. It does go pretty loud, but I don't really want to uh, disturb the neighbors with it. time that's just right. The music ended right about the same time as the end of the demonstration. Anyway, I think a schematic is in order now. Okay, so here is the schematic of the amplifier that you just heard. But anyway, it's a uh, basic two-stage, well, three-stage actually, three-stage amplifier using two tubes. We've got ECC83 over here and an EL84 over here. So basically it comes in, gets amplified by this part of this tube here, then that goes into this variable resistor, gets amplified again by this part, end of the tube, side of the tube, then it goes out into the EL84 where it's amplified to the speaker. And that's basically it. Anyway, I want to move on a little bit and make a double-ended amplifier because, you yeah, know, I've pretty much mastered the technique of making single-ended amplifiers now. Right, so this is the schematic of, well, work in progress schematic of a double-ended valve amp that I'm going to make. I haven't drawn in the preamp or anything like that. This is, all this is just the output stage. So anyway, you can see I've got two back-to-back. They're mixed via this transformer here. The supply voltage comes in here. Well, it goes into the transformer. But also we've got 10k resistor here and a capacitor here just to provide voltage for the second grid. And that also goes off to power this tube here, which I will talk about in just a minute. We'll see what that does. And to bias these tubes, I've decided to use grid bias. So got a variable voltage supply here and that feeds a negative voltage into the grid of these two tubes via these two resistors so 
I can adjust the bias. Now the only trouble is, if I was to feed an audio signal, the same audio signal, into both of these tubes, or valves, or whatever you want to call them, it won't work because they would both be amplifying the same. And they would be fighting against each other. As the audio signal goes positive, they would both conduct more and would be cancelled out at the transformer. And the same goes for when the audio signal goes negative. They would both conduct less and, again, cancel out at the transformer. I think I just knocked the camera, but it doesn't matter. So what we've got to do is invert the signal to one of these. And that's what this thing here does. So this one is connected up to an audio signal. Got a resistor here and a resistor here. And these two resistors are exactly make up exactly the same resistance as this resistor here. The only reason why I haven't used a 50k resistor here as well is because, well, I need a smaller resistance there as well to bias the tube so it's sort of in its halfway position. So anyway, as the audio signal goes positive, this tube will conduct more and the voltage here will drop and the voltage here will rise. And when the audio signal goes negative, this tube will conduct less so the voltage here will rise and the voltage here will drop and what we get is an inverted signal going into this tube and a non-inverted signal going into this tube or valve or whatever you want to call it and problem solved although we do lose a little bit of audio signal around here but I can put an extra stage of amplification in if I need to so that's no big deal Okay, well, just before I take this down, I thought I'd show something a bit interesting. Now, there's a hole, or rather a window, in the plate of the EL84. And I don't know how well you can make that out, but you can see that the inside of the plate is actually fluorescing blue. Which is kind of strange. You can see, like, loads of little blue bars in there. I mean, obviously the grid is making it so it's not just one solid block. I thought that was kind of weird. And we can see it from the other side. You can kind of see it a bit better here. The inside of the plate glowing. I don't know if that's normal or not, but I just thought I'd show this because that's kind of interesting. As you can see when I turn it off, the glow disappears. Look at that. That EL84 has really zorched the carpet there. Better be a bit more careful next time. Now I'm going to do some experiments with the phase splitter circuit. So I've got 47k resistor here, 47k variable resistor here, and the centre tap of that goes into this one mega ohm and then into the grid. So, I hope the camera's still behaving. Turn this on and Measure some voltages. I'm going to put this in the middle of its range. There we go. So turn it on. Wait for this to warm up. Is it on? Oh yeah, I can see it. I can see if the filaments were glowing. Of course, I don't think the camera's going to pick it up. I'm just going to wait for that to warm up. And just run a few little tests. Hopefully not electrocute myself in the process. Okay, so first we're going to test it the voltage between the ground and the cathode which is right here, we've got about 7.5 volts so supply voltage 374 volts and that's a bit high I just realized I've put my power supply on the high setting and the high power setting alright we'll have to redo that again because I had that on the other setting oh, great. Okay, so that's dropped down to 5 point, well, about 6 volts now, because our supply voltage is now about 290-something volts, although it seems to be climbing, which is a bit weird. I don't know why it's doing that. That's, that's weird. Very weird. So anyway, as I adjust this, we should be able to adjust the voltage. I mean the bias. We should see change in the voltage. As you can see, to turn it that way, the voltage goes down as I expected it to. Turn it this way, the voltage goes up. 
See how far that goes up? About 91 volts. So I'm going to put this on to about 20 volts. Which is about... About there. So we've got 20 volts at the cathode. Let's see what voltage we've got at the anode. Okay, 330. Let's see what the voltage is across the resistor. We've got about 22 volts across the resistor. That's what I expected it to be. And across this variable resistor, we've got roughly the same. Okay, now I'm just going to keep measuring between the ground and certain points on the thing because that's going to be easier. So, as you saw, as the tubes, um, as the voltage here increases, I can increase the voltage by doing that, the voltage here should decrease. So I've put the resistor back onto 20. So let's measure what we've got here. And the voltage here, when I turn the potentiometer up, should go down. Well, it will go down, but let's see that in action. There we go. As you can see, dropping like a stone when I turn up the voltage. Working exactly the way that I hoped it would. Okay, so I'm going to set this to about the halfway point. So... Let's set that to about 40 volts. That should be plenty enough. All right, there we go. 44 volts. That's pretty much good. Well, here we are. Here is my design. Here is my fantasy come to life. Okay, here it is. Using two EL84s as the outputs. They're both Tesla brand because I want to make sure they're closely matched. I don't know how closely matched these two are, but hope they're closely matched enough. I've got one ECC83, which I'm using. I'm using one side of that as a preamp, and the other side of that as the phase splitter. The only thing that's not all that good is the transformer. This is the only one I could find that's got a center tapped primary. So that's probably where the only weakness of this thing is going to be. That tiny little transformer, but it's the only one I've got that's got a center tap primary, so I'll have to do well, about 200 ohms between here and here, and about another 200 ohms between here and here, so there should be plenty enough. Shall we turn this on, see if it works? Yeah, why not? I, haven't any... I don't even know how well this is going to work. Okay, well, I'm going to have to reshoot this bit again, because I thought that the meter's display was on the video, was, you know, in the shot, but it when I play the video back, I find it's not in the shot, it's like, sort of about there. I could have sworn it was in the shot, but still. So anyway, we've got this warmed up, and it does seem to be working. Although I'm only powering this on the current limited mode at the moment, which... Some of you may remember, there is a resistor between the transformer and the rectifier in my power supply. To limit the current. Anyway, all the tubes are warmed up. So, let's take some voltage readings. Our supply voltage, which is going into this transformer, is, at the moment, about 316 volts. So that's our B+. Plus. It seems to be jumping around a bit for some reason. I think it's just not very connecting very well with the meter. Our A supply, which comes from this resistor here, we have 294 volts at the transformer it's about the same so it's very little current going through the tubes and I'm using my homemade power supply to supply the bias for the two output tubes and I've set that to about 30 volts so I've measured the grid of one of these Let's see right there, hopefully. Hopefully my hand's not blocking it. Got about okay, we got about 28. Okay, so I'm just gonna clip this on the end of the meter's test lead here. I was showing it in the camera. So there we go. It's not the best connection, but it'll do. I don't have a crocodile lead long enough. 
Okay, I'm just going to connect that to the positive, like that, so we can see our supply voltage, which is 315.8 volts. And even though I haven't got everything set up properly, it does amplify. This wire is going into the preamp stage of the, of the amplifier. If I just touch the end, see if I can get the speaker in the shot as well. You might be able to see. We have quite a bit of amplification there. And you can see when that did that, it pulled the voltage down a little. Okay, well. Trying it with an audio source, but I'm getting absolutely nothing. This is a really perplexing thing here. I don't know what's going on. I've got it connected up to my reel to reel. I don't know why, just lately, this camera is like the frame rate keeps going bonkers. Mind you, this camera's bonkers anyway. I'm going to start the tape. Excuse the mess. Nothing. I mean, I've got this directly connected without any potentiometer or anything right onto the grid of the preamp section, and I cannot hear a single thing. Let's see, we've still got good voltage. I don't know why. I'm going to see if I. Just going to back the bias off a little bit, give it a little less bias, see if that does anything. Oh, yeah, wait. Ah, there we go, that's the problem. Too much bias. Got some music playing. Yeah, we got some music playing through it now. Okay, I'm just gonna turn the bass down some more. Yeah, that sounds pretty distorted. Though. I'm going to put this onto the full power. So this is unlimited. <laughs> oh. Again. Okay, we're getting a little bit of hum. I don't know if that's from my power supply or not. Trying to get the bias adjusted. So what? The, <clears throat> see what the ideal bias voltage is. Now I've got this meter measuring the plate voltage, and this meter measuring the plate current of one of the tubes or valves. At the moment, we're at 358 volts and about 13 milliamps. So I'm going to stop the reel-to-reel -reel playing, which has got some music on it. Excuse the mess as usual. Now I've deliberately turned the bias down too much, so I'm going to adjust it now and see where it sounds best. Right about there, I think. That's about the best I can get it. needs a bit of fine tweaking. Yep, I think that's just about I think that's just about it. 
Okay, I think I figured out why it's sounding distorted at times. Yep. Yeah, it means it's dropping too much current, that's the problem. Okay, so let's see what our bias voltage is. I have to take this amp meter out of the circuit because it was dropping the voltage too far on one side of the transformer. That's why it was sounding distorted just then. Okay, I'm going to turn the bias voltage up a little bit. Okay, going to put that to about 20 volts. Turn on the power. So let's see where the sounds best. Let's wait for it to warm up. Okay, so this is with about 20 volts bias. I'm going to start dropping the bias voltage now. 17. So there we go, I'm going to call this a day. Anyway, here is the schematic of the amplifier so far. Here is the ECC83, this one side being used as the preamp, the other side being used as the phase splitter. There's the potentiometer to set the phase splitter to its halfway point. And then of course, like in the previous schematic you saw, that goes out to these two valves, or tubes, whatever you want to call them, which are both EL84s. And into the speaker. And as you heard, it works rather well. In fact, I'm surprised it worked at all because I was didn't really have the highest expectations for this. But guess I proved myself wrong. Okay, so now we're going to find out exactly how much of a match this transformer is for the EL84s. Some people say me dumb because me not do math. Well, or maths. Maths has got a s on the end. Right, so firstly what we're going to do is measure the AC voltage. And of course, I'm sure most of you will know what that is already, but let's put this onto AC volts and measure the voltage that comes out of the power line here. Okay, so we've now got that plugged into the meter. And we've got about 241 volts. So now we want to measure what the voltage coming out of the transformer is. Well, this transformer is perfectly safe to connect it up to mains because it is a mains transformer anyway. So let's see what the voltage is that we get out. Okay, again. Gives us about 19 volts. That's a little bit more than what I thought it would do, actually. I thought it'd be more around 9 volts, but uh, okay, so now we are going to do just a little bit of maths to find out how much load the transformer's putting on its on the valves. Okay, so we know the input voltage is 241 volts across here and here. We know the output voltage is 19.2. So, let's get the turns ratio, so my calculator, my modified calculator here, so 241 volts, divided by the output voltage, which is 19.2, and we get ratio of about 12.5. So that's the total turns ratio. I can already see that this transformer is way... It's totally not right for this kind of tube, but let's see what we get anyway. So turns ratio, found out, is 12.5. So, kind of hard to write holding the pen at this weird angle like this that I'm having to hold it at. So now we've got to find out what the turns ratio between the center tap 
and one end of the primary, what the turns ratio of that is, and that's very simple, we just divide that by half, or half, you really want to say it in a British accent, and we get about 6.25. So from one side of the primary to the secondary, the turns ratio is 6.25. Now what we've got to do is multiply that number by itself to find the impedance ratio. So 6.25 times 6.25 and we get 39. And then all we've got to do is multiply that by the speaker impedance. And we've got our number of how much load it puts on the tube. So Let's see, at 8 ohms, 8 times 39 is 312 ohms, and at 4 ohms, 39 times 4, 156. I think I just pulled the calculator away before I actually showed it. And that is way short of what we actually want, because... Those EL84s really want an impedance of about 5.2 kilo ohms, and well, you can see right there, it's nothing like it. So anyway, next thing to do is got to find a much better transformer that's a much better match than this little thing. I mean, that's just another power transformer. But all in all, I'd say that's a 100% successful experiment. Until next time, goodbye.